In JC Direct this week, Anglo-American has a plan to beat BHP Group, but is it any good? Trading is a side hustle, excellent results, Robex and Colgro M3, NHI and more tariffs on China coming out of the US. This is JC Direct, episode 587 for 16 May. My name is Simon Brown. We're a little late today. I was uh, standing in for Jeremy Maggs and Hot FM last night, so a little bit crazy there, and I figured I'd rather do this Thursday morning, just ahead of the equity open on the JSC. Before we go any further, we've got some more events we've added. Trading as a side hustle. It's going to be a power hour live at either Standard Bank or Webcast 20 June. Booking is open just one lap.com slash events so perhaps the big news to this week and i'm not going to delve hugely into it uh open ai and google both had events where they basically did it was just ai events well open ai of course it is just ai events i gotta say so chat gpt uh 4 I don't have access to it yet. I am eagerly awaiting it. I am a, I, I mostly use ChatGPT. I've tried some others uh, for a while. I've had uh, Claude. I've used Anthropic and uh, some of their products as well. I use Perplexity as my default search engine. But I've got to say what Google's doing also looks massively interested. And in both cases, giant leaps forward. I mean, just giant leaps forward. So keen to see what comes more from that. I'm going to... Go back. I did a, a podcast a year or so, about a year ago, saying what could we use these uh, uh, these chatbots, whatever you want to call them, uh, artificial intelligence, I suppose, in the investing world. I wasn't massively impressed, but let's see how it looks now. Let's see how much better it is. We will come to that. Not uh, today, but we will get to it soon enough and have a deep dive on that and the possibilities around that. But let's get to some. Market stuff, Tencent had results out. The results were fairly good, in truth. Uh, it was earlier in the week. Uh, and the chart has been looking really good. I mean, there lies the Tencent chart, and we can see a nice break higher in that regard. Break came, that's a weekly chart, so breaks a couple of months ago. And, of course, where this is flowing through is we're seeing it in both NASPASS and PROCESS. NASPASS and PROCESS, make no mistake, uh, Tencent runs, they run too. NASPASS had that massive uh, resistance at about 3,500 rand a share. It's broken that. It's now through 4,000 rand a share. That resistance pretty much sat there for over a year. So the fact that it is now broken is significant. And a resistance that holds for longer, and I always do my, my lines horizontal. I don't like slanted trend lines, and I know I just had one in the 10 cent chart, but I prefer these sort of horizontal. And the longer it holds, the bigger the break. We can see that on the FTSE, and I did an article on the FTSE 100 and how that has broken higher, just one lap.com slash ETFs. You will find that there. So there's a uh, NASPASS process is going to look pretty much the same. If we pull up the JSC chart, also a break. NASPASS, however, just doing a little bit better in terms of that return. But here's a then fun fact. So last night, Wednesday in the US, NASDAQ and S&P both closed at all-time highs, and that is significant. Let's move that to a weekly chart. I'm always preferring weekly. It is significant that they were at all-time highs. There was a bit of weakness there, which could have uh, gotten ugly, but nope, markets are roaring again. Our top 40 is at highs for the year, and it is a, what, maybe 2% off all-time highs, those all-time highs from January of 2023. What's important here is that we are hitting at that resistance kind of space. We've been driven by gold stocks. We've been driven by the NASPAS and process, who's still significant. We've seen a bit of a recovery in Richmond. All in, it is looking good. And, of course, then we have the RAND, which is uh, strong also at best levels for the year. Again, let's make that weekly. And RAND is very much saying, yeah, it's back in that sort of 18 to 1850 at the moment. It's just under 1830, but in that sort of support zone. A break there, 17 comes into play, certainly 1750, maybe even 17 into play. And the weird thing is everyone's looking at this and thinking, oh, we have an election in 13 days' time. I spoke about this at the beginning of the year. Elections are noisy things, but uh, yeah, markets broadly continue. I always say, you know, 
who's going to be in power post the election? And whether we're looking at our own, the US election coming in November, the UK election, which needs to happen in the next couple of months, how much does who's in power really change things? It does to a degree. There was a great article from Isaac Odendahl, old mutual uh, chief strategist. You'll find it on MoneyWeb. And he's talking around a Trump presidency and how he thinks a Trump presidency probably leads to uh, higher inflation. Not chronically like we've seen before, but certainly higher inflation. And that's just in many ways the whole point is that there are some small nuances, but it's not going to be massive. This isn't, you know, in, in South Africa, for example, it's not like the ANC has gone. We've spoken about this before. Uh, the consensus seems to be ANC mid to high 40% as they ramp up their electioneering campaign. And make no mistake, they are masters at electioneering campaigns. And what that essentially does is say, well, then we can have a middle-of-the-road coalition. We, they don't need the EFF or MK. Uh, I've long been saying, I think, IFP. They give KZN to the IFP and then share it national and find a coalition in that sort of regard. They're both nationalist parties. They will fit fairly well in that. But the market is shrugging off. And at this point, the market is looking strong, which is, well, you know what? We will take it. Uh, talking about strong, the NHI bill was signed by the president on Wednesday afternoon. When he announced the bill, we saw massive sell-off in healthcare stocks, whether it was Discovery, the, 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 the healthcare medical aid insurers, whether it was the hospital stocks. They did bounce a bit on Wednesday. A couple of things. And let me say right up front, the idea of a, a universal healthcare for South Africa is an excellent idea. I got no qualms with that. The cost of $200 billion, I don't know. I mean, so someone said the, the, the numbers, and I think it was a discovery, VAT would have to go up to 21.5%. You know what? I would pay 21.5% VAT if I then didn't have any medical expenses because the state then provided me with quality, free medical help. Problem, does anyone trust our government with $200 billion a year? The answer is no. Notwithstanding, I mean, Treasury has said there is no money, uh, there is no timelines, there are going to be court cases. This thing is not happening for a very, very long time. I spoke to uh, Lanwaba Nkabela from Perpetua this morning on my Money Web show, and, and he was kind of saying, you know what, you almost got to look through it. Go from the bottom up. He says your healthcare stocks, including dividends, paying you about 10%, which is a reasonable return where we're going to see that strong growth coming from. We had US CPR 3.4% in April, mostly driven by rent and gas. Uh, that's the nothing burger set of numbers. That's not the most thrilling in the world. Uh, yeah, I mean, three and a half, 3.4. It went down. I suppose that's the important point. We needed to get a lot more down. Make no mistake about that. There is still a long way to go. But in the meantime, it is going in the right way. And that perhaps is what matters most of all. Uh, moving in the right direction. Will we see quicker rate cuts from Jerome Powell? Uh, the answer is no. That's not going to change by any stretch of imagination. I still think maybe we get a July because he can't do September. Otherwise, we're going to get ourselves a November rate cut. We've also got the U.S. imposing more, uh, more tariffs rather on China. Donald Trump started this. And when Biden came, I remember saying, this, the tariffs aren't going away. This is the new sort of Cold War out there. The key thing is that Biden does it more systematically. What they're trying to do is squeeze China, who they view as a competitor. A competitor in a military sense, in a, in a, a geopolitical sense, but very much so in an economic sense. So all of the uh, tariffs and sanctions on selling certain goods to China have been around technology, trying to hinder the growth of their chips and, and their artificial intelligence and all of that sort of stuff. It kind of works, except then, of course, China just goes and makes those themselves. So it actually creates uh, more resilience within China in many senses. The new ones that came out were it was around steel. Uh, EVs, uh, import tariffs have gone from 25% to 100%. Solar panels and the like. So a couple of things are going to happen. Some of those will get rooted through Mexico. Absolutely, they will. Uh, some of them are going to be inflationary because what does this mean? Well, let's look at Tesla, who's the big EV uh, seller in, in America. Suddenly, the threat of Chinese EVs, which aren't big in the US, but they are bigger in, in, in Europe, that threat diminishes. So what does it do? 
Well, it gives Tesla some pricing power. The same for solar panels, the same for all those other things to which they put on the, the tariffs. It suddenly gives the incumbents in country a bit of pricing power. Some gets rooted through uh, the, 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 the Mexico. It does create some inflation in the US. Again, why? Well, because you're a solar panel manufacturer and the cheaper or the Chinese imports, I don't know if they're cheaper or not, suddenly cost 25% more. When you push your prices up 5%, you're still golden. It also means that for the rest of the world, we get better prices, right? China can sell less solar panels into America, so they need to find other markets, uh, and those markets are competitive, uh, and therefore maybe they need to push prices down a bit. In total, it's about $18 billion of imports that have got new tariffs. Uh, for Prospect uh, 2023, U.S. imported $227 billion of goods from China, so it is less than 5%. It is not massive by any stretch of imagination. But it's not insignificant. It is this quiet war that has been waged by the U.S. on China. China is obviously very aware of it. They're not going after mass products. They're not saying we, you know, Chinese soya, for example, or Chinese pork or whatever the case may be. They're being very, very targeted. They are trying to hinder a adversary, let's say adversary rather than enemy. And, and broadly it works. It can spill over at some point. Of course it can. But for now, I suppose we say it is working. We had some uh, results out, some really good results out. Uh, Kelgra M3, which is a stock that I hold, held it from about 350, if memory serves. Yeah, about 350. And the, the numbers were good. They're made in dividend. Under nine and a half cents, so five percent of HEPs, and that they're going to continue doing. I spoke with Vickers Lauterhan. They are quite possibly going to continue share buybacks, although share buybacks are closed at five eight five yesterday, Wednesday. I don't know if share buybacks really work at this pricing levels, but it's still well below NAV. A lot of that NAV, however, is land bank. They sold a lot less units, and that had bothered me. But Vickers said quite simply. They, they have flexibility in terms of what they build and sell. And that flexibility, therefore, was less student housing, less very low LSM housing, which they can sell a lot more of, but obviously lower prices and therefore smaller margins and profit. So the HEPs was up quite strongly, 25 odd percent, notwithstanding unit sales were down. Uh, Memorial Park's doing good. They're trying to get that to 100 million a year profit so that it covers the head office fee. Uh, they will probably get there in, a, in, 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 in two years, maybe three Maybe a bit quicker, but I think not. All in all, a good set of numbers. And I was, there was a pre-close that they had back in February, and I spoke about it at the time, where they were worried about invasions and violence on some of their on some of their properties, and they had plans to combat it. And I said to Vickers, "Have you seen anything as yet?" And he said, "Touch wood, not nothing." So uh, good news in that regard. The other really strong set of results was. Uh, Robex, Robex, uh, and again, a, a, a really good numbers. I mean, and, and the market absolutely liked them. Not a stock I hold, but a stock that is, you know, if you look at construction, these folks are doing it. They're in Australia. They're making money. They are de-risking Sanrail. Sanrail's down to about 20% of their business. They've retended for some of those uh, Sanrail uh, contracts that, that, that were cancelled and then resent out, but only at good margins. And they are doing good margins. The, yeah, looking through the numbers... There was nothing there that you could look at and say, hmm, isn't that a concern? It was just generally strong all round, which is, uh, well, good news. Absolutely good news. So BHP Group came back with a second offer to Anglo-American. Essentially, it was around 7% or 8% higher in total. It was a 15% increase in the price that they were going to pay, but the other T's and C's, unbundling of assets, etc., remained the same. Anglo took no time in saying no and then published their own restructuring plan, which they said was going to be way better and would solve the, 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 the problems. Firstly, they are going to get rid of De Beers, 
They're going to get rid of uh, Anglo-American platinum. They're going to get rid of their coking coal in Western Australia. And they're going to cut back on their spending on the fertilizer businesses in the UK. That leaves them with high-quality iron ore, being Kumba and uh, uh, South America, Minas Rios. And it leaves them with their, their copper assets, also mostly South America. They've also got some manganese assets in South Africa, which is really attractive assets. Makes them a much more focused and concentrated group. Are shareholders more likely to say yes to that one? I think so. There's also some better sort of T's and C's to it. For example, they're getting rid of of, of Anglo Platinum. If BHP, if BHP takes over, BHP is basically unbundle it, make it gone, do it by Friday. Okay, which is going to be really, really bad for the price because a whole bunch of people are going to get Anglo American shares and Anglo American Platinum shares and say, we don't want them. Thank you very much. What the heck's happening here? So a lot of selling pressure into the market. This gives them space to manage that 70% that they own. In other words, they could go and do a book build and sell 4 or 5% here, 10% there. They could IPO some of it. They could unbundle some of it. So they could be much more strategic in that process and therefore a lot less damaging to the Anglo Platinum share price. So that certainly is, is, is good news. Um, that helps. De Beers, ah, you know, I got two words, three words, lab grown diamonds. So De Beers was delisted in 2001. Fun story. I had bought a De Beers warrant, Deutsche Bank warrant, one DBR, like minutes ahead of the announcement. That warrant more than doubled in price. I took the money and ran. And then I got phone calls from my broker from the JSC saying, well, do you insider trading? I'm like, no, man, I live in Bortus Hall. I, at that point, I did. I have no inside information. I know nothing. It was a chart pattern or whatever. I forget it. Truthfully, it was luck. Take it with both hands. The deal listing happened. It was uh, the Botswana government, uh, Oppenheimer family, and Anglo American who then held the business. 2011, uh, Anglo American paid 100 million zar for the 40 odd percent that the Oppenheimers held. Uh, they now hold 85 percent and. The Botswana government holds the other 15%. There aren't any sort of really true diamond miners out there except for one listed in Toronto. Uh, they actually interestingly have a JV project as well with De Beers, but that share price is a mess. I, I mean, do they try and sell it off market? Do they IPO it? Do they unbundle it? Again, they've got time to be strategic about this. There's no rush with De Beers saying, come guys, Friday, sell it, make it gone. They can do this slowly. Is this a better deal than the BHP one? I think yes. Unless BHP comes back with a really good price, I think this probably is a better deal. Exiting platinum, a very cyclical, a, a precious metal. Uh, they've got, as, as uh, Jimmy Moyaha said on my Money Web show earlier in the week, an existential crisis in the sense that PGMs, electric vehicles, like where's the story here? Remember Anglo-American exited gold some many, many a decade or so ago? And well, how's that going? I mean, not so great, right? They sold Anglo gold to Shanti and uh, not only is the price up, but uh, it, 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 dividends have been strong. But they don't want those pressures. They want industrial, almost in a cent, manganese, iron ore, copper. It makes sense. I think this is a better deal. To the question, is it any good? Yes. Is it better than the BHP group proposal? I think yes. Will shareholders vote on it? I think yes as well. So we're going to see big shake up there coming. Make no mistakes about that. So coming up, a new feature I'm going to slip in every week at the end of the podcast. What's coming over the week ahead? Friday, we have got Richmond results. I hold Richmond. I'm interested to see those. Monday in the US, we've got Palo Alto results. Not a stock I hold, but lots of excitement there. And of course, the ETN is now available from F&B trading on the JSC. We've also got Netcare, Astral, famous brands all coming locally on Monday. Uh, Tuesday is coronation results. Wednesday, uh, inflation data from us, South Africa, hugely important. And then UK inflation as well, and the FOMC minutes. The FOMC minutes will be 8 o'clock Wednesday night, so that's a little bit later. And then also on Wednesday is NVIDIA results. Those are going to be a biggie. I, you know, with, with all the, uh, the AI talk that came through this week from uh, Google Alphabet and OpenAI, those chips that they make are still hugely in demand. Make no mistake about that. That is not going anywhere, anytime soon. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. 
JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Disclaimer out the way, we'll leave the show there for this week. Uh, remember events, just one app.com slash events. My name is Simon, and we'll chat again next week. Look after yourself, and if you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers, all. <laughs>